welcome back. Thank you so much for being here today for yet another edition of Five Minutes with Phil. We are looking at God's Word uh, every day, and this week we're we're unpacking a, a portion of Scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. And uh, I'm not going to read the entire passage, but I am going to uh, kind of recap and pick up where we left off yesterday. Now, yesterday we talked about how Paul identified that he had this thing going on in his life that he called his thorn in his flesh. And it was so severe that he said it, that it tormented him. Well, we get a little bit more of an insight as to how this affected uh, Paul when we take a look at the, the next couple of verses where we left off. So I'm going to flash them on the screen. Take a look at this. Let's go back to verse 7, and let's uh, keep on reading now. Uh, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now that's where we left off. Verse 8 says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Okay, back up. All right? Let, let, let's, let's just get real here. <laughs> um, Paul prayed, he said, three times. He begged God to remove whatever this thorn was that was tormenting him over and over. And God's answer, here's what it was not. God's answer was not, okay, it's gone. Go about your merry way. Be happy. That's not what God did. Uh, God answered in a, <laughs> in a, totally different way than what Paul was expecting. Can I ask you a question today? Uh, how do you deal with those moments where you pray a very honest and earnest prayer? It's a good prayer. It's not like you're praying for bad things to happen, okay? You're, you're praying for God to change your circumstances, to change your health, uh, you're, you're praying for God to remove something that gives you grief, whatever that is. And he does not answer you in the way that you would like him to do so. I'm sure Paul just wanted God to say, it's gone. Instead, God says, my grace is made perfect in you. My, my, my grace is enough. It's sufficient. You're good. All you need is me. I, I doubt Paul initially thought, well, that, okay, thanks. How do we respond when God answers us in a way that we don't want him to? God, please do this. And he says, well, I'm going to answer your prayer, but it's not in this way. God, I'm asking you to please that you would do this and do this and do this. Please, please. And, 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 and again, you're doing everything right and God says, I'm going to answer this, but not in the way that you want. I, can I be honest with you? As a pastor, I have seen people never recover from those moments. And that has been a stumbling block for them for the rest of their life. Some even walk away from God because of that moment. There's a verse in Isaiah. I, I don't have it for you on the screen, but here's basically what God says. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. And God says, my thoughts are way higher than your thoughts. And, and here's the deal. When, when God answers my prayer in a way that is way different than what I want him to, that's where my trust in God has to kick in. That's where I need to say, okay, okay, God, you know better. So because you know better, I can trust you. And even though I don't like that answer, and even though 
I'm not pretty I'm not wild about how you have responded to my thorn. I trust you. I trust you. And before we go further in the scripture, I want to challenge you today to just trust the Lord. He may not have answered your prayer the way that you want him to, but trust the Lord. He knows what he's doing. His thoughts and his ways are so much higher than ours. Okay? I gotta let you go. God bless you. Love you. Join me tomorrow. Same time. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.